from Nashville, Tennessee. It's the three. And here's your host, Laura Harris-Smith. Hi, everybody. I'm Laura Harris-Smith, and welcome to The Three. We're at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. I know you think we've been here for three months, but we haven't. We've been interviewing the who's who in Christian media. And one of my favorite people, he is a gatekeeper for sure in this media, Christian media industry, is Larry Sparks. And he joins us today on The Three. Larry, joy, we're oh, just so happy to have you I here. I love it. And Larry is, you're not only an author, you are also a publisher. You're the publisher yes. of Destiny Image. But, you know, I asked Larry before we came on air, this is typical host mo mode, put that hat on and ask, what would you like to talk about? Most guests tell me that they want to talk about this project, that project, what their next sermon is or their own television mm -hmm. show or whatever. And maybe that's the answer they give because that's what they think I'm after. Mm -hmm. Last night, I literally wondered if I was going to be able to interview you. So the Lord worked this out today. And I thought, what would Larry talk about? What would Larry Sparks talk about for a half an hour? And it was the answer you gave me today. You want to talk about revival. You yes. want to talk about what's happening in the earth today. That is your heart. And I think that because it is, God has entrusted you with all of these other things. The publishing company, you're an author yourself, and you have many other things, and I want you to please, to make the show interesting, feel free to jump in and, and tell, talk about those while we're here. But let's just start out with your book, Pentecostal Fire. Yes. And tell us why you wrote it. Well, you know, I, I had an encounter with the Lord in 2021. I was at a church in Arizona called Fresh Start Church, and they are going after the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So they know how to pray, they know how to worship. <laughs> they called me up on stage while I was there. The pastors, Paul and Kim Owens, prayed over me, prophesied over me. And uh, I had a powerful touch of the Lord, but I didn't quite understand what mm. all happened. So I came back home <laughs> and I had this conversation with God. I said, God, what did you do to me while I was there? Because I felt it, I sensed okay. it. I know I had an encounter with God, but I wanted to steward that encounter yeah. well. And I encourage the folks who are watching, you know, God touches people, God will do unusual things, but it is so healthy to have a conversation with the Holy Spirit about what He has done in your life and ask Him to give you clarity on it. Because Laura, <laughs> I've been touched by the Holy Spirit, but I don't mm -hmm. want it just to be a nice touch. I don't want it to just, I, right. I don't want it just an experience. Mm -hmm. I want to know how to steward it so I can Lasting walk in transformation. Fruit. I love that about you. Lasting fruit. Yeah. So I asked the Lord and wouldn't you know it, he responded, but he didn't tell me anything that he did for me or to me. He made a statement. Okay. He said, tell my church, I'm reintroducing her to Pentecostal fire. Wow. And when I say Pentecostal, I'm not talking about a certain denomination or okay. a flavor of church because people hear okay. that and they think of, okay, Pentecostal Christianity, which has kind of been around since 1906, the Azusa <laughs> Street yes, Revival, exactly. Assemblies of God, mm -hmm. Foursquare, I love all those denominations. Sure, sure. I love that. But I'm talking about back in Acts chapter 2. Acts 2, baby. Where, where God <laughs> poured right. out His Spirit. That's and right. His objective to this day until Jesus mm. comes is pour out His Spirit on all flesh. Mm. And that's what we're going after. And I can tell you, we're seeing that happening right now in a big way. Wow. Okay. Quantify that. Everybody, yep. I've never met anybody who doesn't like revival, but yes. so many people don't even know what it is. A couple yeah. of years ago, we started praying this dangerous prayer at our church, you know, more Lord. And <laughs> then we started just, we take your finger, draw a circle and say, revival starts with me. Yes. Everything right here around me. And so how can someone very practically invite revival into their life? Yes, yes. Revival really is about going back to Acts chapter two, back mm -hmm. to Pentecost. And here's just, I'll, I'll give people two examples of people in the book of Acts that are invitations. I think that's the first thing it's recognizing. When you look at people in the Bible, particularly the book of Acts, because I think that's the model for what yeah, normal Christianity is. should look like. Like our dear friend <laughs> Sid would say, yes. normal as defined right. by the Bible. Right. 
Okay. And I always love, <laughs> I believe it's Acts 5, where you have Peter, the Apostle Peter, yeah. where it talks about how his shadow, people would oh. bring people out into the streets right. so that Peter's shadow might be cast upon yeah. them because if his shadow fell on them, the sick would be they healed, healed and the demonized would be liberated. Ooh. Now, here's what I tell people. I love the fact that he was so anointed that his shadow healed yeah. the sick and yeah. cast out demons. But what's more impressive is that it's possible to be that saturated mm. by the Holy Spirit. And the Lord said, listen, Larry, that was not unique to Peter. If the Bible said, and it doesn't say this, the Bible does not say that that experience or that measure of Holy Spirit mm -hmm, saturation mm -hmm. was exclusively That's available right. to it's Peter. Not, yeah. I feel the anointing e even mm -hmm, as I say mm -hmm. this to you. Right. And I just want you to know practically what it does look like is what Laura said she led her church in saying, more Lord. Even I want to encourage you to pray right now more. Mm -hmm. Will you read things in the Bible and sometimes what happens, I feel like this is a word, you get to a certain portion of scripture. Think of John 14 where Jesus says, the works that I've done you'll do and greater, greater works. Than. People go by, they just go by it yeah. quickly yeah. because it's so provocative. Mm -hmm. it, it so stirs hunger in your heart to say, God, what does that look like? And I think, Laura, we disqualify ourselves. We I think agree. To, we, we think, well, that was for Peter or that was for Paul in Acts 19, mm. where it says they would literally take off pieces of clothing that he wore. It wasn't like hankies that the wow. guy prayed for. <laughs> it was like pieces of clothing that he wore yeah. while doing his nine to five mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. And they'd put those pieces of cloth Wow. on the sick and demonized and they'd be healed. Mm. And Acts 19 says, extraordinary mm. miracles happen through Paul. Wow. And again, I'm impressed that his clothing yeah. carried healing. Yeah. More impressed. I'm more impressed that it's possible to be that saturated wow. by the Holy wow. Spirit. So practically to answer your question, mm. it looks like a believer who reads the Bible and says, I want everything that go. the Word of God says is available. Yeah. And I'm not going to believe the lie that right. when the last apostle died or the scripture was canonized, right. that it's no longer available. That's exactly right. I want to urge our people today to get into that mindset and believe everything that's in God's Word is for you. So when we come back from the break, we're going to talk more about Pentecostal Fire, new book from Larry Sparks. Be right back after the break. Stay close. Hi, I'm Laura Harris-Smith, inventor of Quiet Brain Essential Oil Blend. You know, if you would have told me two years ago when I was mixing that very first little bottle that we would have thousands of customers from all over the world and that we'd have to quadruple our staff to keep up with the demand produced by our international TV infomercial, I'm not sure I would have believed you. And if you told me I'd be hearing regular testimonies of improved sleep, reduced stress, migraine relief, even help with other neurological challenges like seizures, PTSD, tremors, muscle spasms, even anxiety? Well, I probably would have cried. And sometimes when I'm reading the Quiet Brain testimony, I do. But if you would have told me one year ago when we introduced our Quiet Brain Variety gift box that it would become the biggest selling item on our online store at quietbrainoil.com, I would have said, I believe it. The reason is because I created the gift box to be the perfect combination of all of our Quiet Brain products. The oil itself for topical use on the skin that contains only certified pure oils that can cross the blood-brain barrier and bring speedy relief and neurological support. And our aromatherapy line with our Quiet Brain Shampoo and Conditioner, candles, inhalers, all of which use the nasal passages to gain direct access to the limbic brain, which is the emotional center of the brain. So whether you need to use Quiet Brain topically or aromatherapeutically, the Quiet Brain gift box has everything that you need. And now we've given our gift box an upgrade without increasing the price. It now comes with our Satin Quiet Brain Sleep Eye Mask. Just put a few drops of oil on the nose guard and you're on your way to enjoying a good night's sleep. And it all comes packaged in a beautiful gift box and delivered to the destination of your choice or sent to you so you can use it for seven different gifts or keep a few for yourself. When sold separately, the items in the box are $160, but you're getting it for $135. That's a $25 savings, meaning that you're getting the nasal inhaler and the shampoo and conditioner for free. The Quiet Brain gift box comes with one Whisper Quiet Night Light diffuser with 16 color options and intermittent mist options, one dropper bottle of Quiet Brain, one Quiet Brain nasal inhaler, one Quiet Brain candle, the Satin Sleep Eye Mask, and your healing shampoo and conditioner. And remember, both are color safe, aloe enriched, paraben and sulfate free, 
loaded with wonderful ingredients like unscented coconut oil, olive oil, sugar beet betaine, and of course the Quiet Brain Blend with its eight essential oils like lavender, frankincense, myrrh, sandalwood, and more. We get repeated testimonies of both being used with great effectiveness during headaches for pain relief. So go to quietbrainoil.com to order. Quiet Brain is a great gift for any time of the year, but especially for seasons like these that bring additional stress. Give the gift of health and peace this year. Give the gift of Quiet Brain. Hey guys, welcome back to The Three. I'm Laura, so glad that you are with us today. We're talking to author, publisher, Larry Sparks, and we've been talking about revival. His book is Pentecostal Fire, and you're right, that's not a denomination. It's not, no. it's not that, it's not what you're talking about. We're talking about how we are inviting mm. God's presence. We're inviting God yeah. to just sit on our lives, <laughs> to just mm. take over. And so uh, in the commercial break, <laughs> we were discussing how we've both been to Asbury yes. this last year. In fact, Larry, we... Um, decided that we were just going to go and then the Lord said, Laura, you have a TV show. Ask them if you can bring your cameras in. Wow. Well, we got there and I thought, no, that, you know, I had heard they had not even allowed any other network in. So sure. I was like, it's, let's just go and we'll go to the campus and we'll interview some people, get some testimonies. We wind up being ushered in to the head office. They wow. give us passes. They let us take our cameras in a service and we interviewed all of these and I came away, I went, skeptical is the right word. I, I went know, skeptical, not I cynical, but like, I've heard that this is like an outpouring of kindness yeah. or a revival of gentleness yes. or goodness, confession. It started with a student confessing things. But Larry, I went and I interviewed people who had been sick, bedridden for six years and got healed. Yeah. I heard of cancer. I heard of somebody who got out of a wheelchair. Yeah. Um, the Lord was there with many different kinds of revival, right? Yeah. What happened when you went? It's funny, as you're even saying that, I think the key is that they were hosting the presence of the Holy That's Spirit. It. And That's what it was. Obviously, what people saw was, again, a very sweet-spirited yeah. revival where there was confession of uh -huh, sin, where uh -huh. there was reading of Scripture and worship. But you hear stories behind the scenes or what happened yeah. at the altar. Right. People getting healed mm -hmm. of physical disease. <laughs> I heard of a lot of people getting delivered from demonic torment. Really? Oh, yes. Oh, wow. yes. So a very strong deliverance emphasis, a lot of what was happening behind the scenes. Mm. And uh, I went in cynical, <laughs> not, not, you know what? Skeptical is the yeah. right word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went in, and I'm like, Lord, is, is this the great end time revival? <laughs> um, or is, uh, this is just me, I, I regret to say this, or is this students who don't want to go to school? <laughs> that was, and here, and you know what the Lord said yeah. to me? So I went and uh, it was, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was pure. Mm, I knew it pure. was God. Yeah. Um, but the Lord told me, Larry, you should know well what's happening here. And I said, mm. okay, well, God, you need to help me figure this out. <laughs> he said, Acts 2 verse 1 comes before Acts 2 verse 2. Acts 2 1 we see, and they were gathered, and they together, were gathered together in one place. Wow. And what happened from Asbury? We heard mm -hmm. of all these university gatherings that took place, not just yeah. in schools and universities, right. or even I started to hear about secular universities yeah, that were seeing the people gather. And I felt mm. like the Holy Spirit told me that the Acts 2 1 gathering uh -huh. prepares the way for the inevitability of an Acts 2 verse 2 suddenly outbreak That's of it. the Holy Spirit. And what we're seeing, it's like Ezekiel's it. river in that starts with a trickle, mm -hmm. but as you keep going, as mm -hmm. you keep pressing into God, as you maintain that hunger, it goes from trickle, ankle deep, uh, knee, knee deep, uh -huh. to suddenly the river was wow. all consuming. So I think that's where we are right now. Oh, that is so, so good. I'm yeah, telling yeah. you. We wound up interviewing faculty, staff. There was a guy who was there. He, he was a professor there for a while. He had been a student in 1970 when another revival came through yes. Asbury. They've had nine outpourings. Yep. And I know there'll be a 10th because yeah, yeah. they welcome revival. Yeah, yeah. I too, my husband and I were making a joke about, isn't it a miracle in and of itself that the kids wanted to go to chapel? Like kids at Christian schools are like, check, or, or you don't yeah. go to enough chapels, you get fined. And, and I understand 
the concept yeah. behind all of that. Oh, but yes. the fact, and we talked about their communications, to their communications director about this. She said, oh, absolutely, the fact that they couldn't wait to just stay in chapel and that That's they the just Lord. slept there. I also, Larry, heard critics yep. saying, well, I, I saw pictures of people on their phones and people on their laptops, and I don't think that's true revival. It didn't have, uh -huh. um, it, it didn't have the charismatic flavor that I think revival should yeah, have. And, yes. and listen, we pastor a spirit-filled church, okay? So I'm all about that. Yes, me too. But wouldn't you want? I'd want to have my laptop out and work in an environment like that. Yes. I, I get creative when I'm around the Holy Spirit like that. And so Me too. I just believe that Asbury was a beautiful picture of the diversity of revival. Yes, you yes, know? I agree. And it sounds like we even heard and saw different things. I, we did, we <laughs> did. And it is interesting. I was talking to Sid Roth about it, and I love the language he used to describe Asbury because we both would say this is a legitimate move of God. Mm -hmm. In fact, I believe it is the seed form of the great outpouring. Oh, wow. Wow. that will ultimately welcome Jesus back to the planet. Okay. Because the reality is this, Jesus is not coming back for a church that's like busted and disgusted. I believe that because- <laughs> I'm gonna borrow that, that's true. You, go, go ahead, <laughs> because Paul actually talks about a church that is full of glory without spot or and wrinkle, wrinkle. a right. glorious bride. Mm -hmm. So will there be darkness in the earth when Jesus comes back? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Will there be chaos? Sure. But I believe he is going to come back for a church mm -hmm. or a people that are compatible with right. his very second coming, which is called a glorious appearing. Yeah. So bottom line, it's Kim Owens who said, Jesus is coming for a church in revival. So what we're seeing right now, like I alluded to with Sid Roth, he mm -hmm. said, this is a sneak preview of coming attraction. <laughs> and you can just hear Sid saying that. I can. <laughs> and, but it's so, it's so true. Wow. Well, I think before we leave here today, we're gonna have to pray for revival. Oh yes. For, for folks. Um, I just want to add this, that revival does start with you. It yes, starts it with you. So if you're waiting on the world to go into revival, yeah. you know, I just, I believe worldwide revival is a bunch of little mini individual revivals. Right. Yeah. And so we're going to give you that invitation today. After the break, we're going to pray with you. We want to see revival run down your street, over the threshold of your door, down your chimney and flood in every window Let and impact your family, your city, your nation. And so would you, do, would you do that? Would you come right back after the break? And Larry and I are going to pray for you. We'll be right back. Neuromatics Oil is a family of therapeutic grade patented oil blends created by nutritionist and author Laura Harris Smith. Invented for her own lifelong journey for neurological health, Quiet Brain now helps those worldwide who suffer from insomnia, migraines, anxiety, seizures, tremors, and more. Quiet Brain contains oils like frankincense, myrrh, lavender, sandalwood, and others. Next, Happy Brain is a bright mood lifting citrus blend and contains oils like lemon, lime, clementine, spearmint, and more. Users say it combats depression and even aids in weight loss. Next is Sharp Brain, Laura's focus blend, also used to improve cognitive memory issues with oils like coffee, cinnamon, vanilla, clove, and others. Each $69.95 bottle is a 10 week supply if used daily or about a dollar a day. And right now buy two bottles and get the third one free and get a free eye mask using the promo code on your screen at neuromaticsoil.com or at 1-855-784-3827. That's 1-855-QUIETBRAIN. I'm naturopathic Dr. Laura Harris-Smith and if you'll give me 10 days, give it to God and go to bed can help you stress less, sleep better, and dream more. There are even links inside to my free 10 days to deeper sleep and dreams program and 10 good night videos. Can you close your eyes and just still listen to me? The whole book takes place in your bedroom and with chapter titles like the junk under your bed, the treasures in your bedroom, and the monsters in your closet. Give it to God and go to bed helps you learn to rest and hear God speak in dreams. Take back your sleep and dreams, my friend, with give it to God and go to bed. Welcome back to The Three, everybody. I'm Laura, and you know, we've been talking about revival with uh, publisher and author Larry Sparks, my good friend Larry Sparks. But uh, we've talked about Asbury. We've talked about, you know, different revivals, and now ever since Asbury, I wound up doing three episodes on revival because wow. I just wanted to study how did they start, yeah. look for the signs again, and what can we do now? Yes. So you're you have some really good advice for, for what that means in each individual life. What is that? Yeah, yeah. 
I think sometimes people are waiting for God to send a revival yes, sovereignly. Yes. Uh -huh. And there is a sovereign element because, let me give you this, Acts 2.1 and Acts 2.2. We talked about that in previous segment. Yep. So Acts 2 verse 2, we are so familiar, particularly as Pentecostals, <laughs> yeah. with suddenly and the dramatic outpouring exactly. of the Spirit and mm -hmm. the manifestations of fire and miracles mm -hmm. and all those things. And that's true. But the Lord told me, you know what, before there's an Acts 2 verse 2, which is the sovereign suddenly of God, right. there's the stewardship of man. What does that mean? Ooh. Remember Jesus gave him a promise. He said, tarry or wait in the city yes. until you receive power from on high. From on Jesus high. gave them a promise and they actually did something with it. They mm -hmm. were basically responding to a promise of Jesus in Acts chapter one, ah, before Acts two, okay. two, That's we right. see what they did in the upper room. That's it said right. they gave themselves to constant prayer. Mm. Jesus made a mm. promise. The people stewarded the promise yeah. by actually doing something about it, which I wanna encourage all of you who are watching right now, yeah. revivalists are not made sovereignly. God is sovereign. He has the right to choose anybody. But I believe a revivalist, a man, right. woman, child, whoever, is actually made by a person who decides, I am going to actually step in to the timeline of Scripture, and I'm going to believe that everything God said is available for right now. I will be the person that He can pour out His Spirit through. Laura, it's yeah, just it's yeah. just making yourself available, that so good. and that's what they did. They responded to Jesus' mm -hmm. promise. He said, "I'm going to you know pour out my spirit. Wait in the city, mm -hmm. and wait for, to receive power." They mm -hmm. did that, but there's a there's a now we're not we're not standing in that promise again yeah. because the Holy Spirit's been poured out. Right. But there is a promise right. that we are all standing on. Joel yeah. two and Acts two, where we see yeah. in the last days, God yeah. says, "I'll pour out my spirit now on all flesh." All flesh. In Acts. Chapter one, mm -hmm. Acts two, and Acts two, it was just that 120. It was just the original <laughs> 120 in the early That's church. Right. Now God's great objective is that all mm -hmm. flesh everywhere would mm -hmm. be brought into a collision with the yeah, outpouring right. of the Holy Spirit. That's the good right. news, God's gonna use you for that. And I can tell you that 100% because all flesh can't fit in a church. Mm -hmm. All flesh can't even fit in the biggest stadium, <laughs> no. but all flesh is wherever yeah. we go, is wherever our sphere of influence right. is. Mm -hmm. And it is up to us to carry the presence mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit to those places, exactly to those people. Right. I want us to pray for people. Mm -hmm. And I want us to, there's some people out there who they say, well, I'm this denomination sure. or that denomination this supersedes all of that. Sure. We are children of God. Yes. We're going to pray for you, and I want you to join in with us. Larry, I'm going to ask you to start, yeah, yeah. and you just pray whatever it is. There's going to be words of knowledge that are going to be flowing. You just say whatever you want to say, and let's do it. We're going to get revival into your life. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's do it. I've got good news for you. If you're born again, you know Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, and that's great news, but here's the deal. I'm starting to think of people throughout history. I think of Catherine Kuhlman. Think of John G. Lake or Smith Wigglesworth. These are people who walked in a real measurable presence of God, not living just inside of them. You've got to hear me. They were born again because the Spirit lived inside of them, but the Spirit also rested upon them. And even as I say those words, I feel like those of you who are watching <laughs> saying, I want that. I know He lives in my heart. I know I'm going to heaven. But while you are on the earth, I believe God wants you to experience the abiding, resting, overshadowing presence of the Holy Spirit. In fact, some of you right now, you might actually feel trembling in your hands. Yep. You might feel electricity like in your chest. Don't resist it. Don't manufacture it. It's wrong to manufacture it, but don't resist it because the scripture says, don't quench the Holy Amen. Spirit. I actually feel like it's increasing on you right now. That's why we say more, Lord. Can I tell you what that means? It just means that Lord, Holy Spirit who lives inside of me, I want him to increasingly rest upon me. So Father, right now, I thank you, God, that our friends who are watching, I pray for every gift of the Holy Spirit to be in operation in their life. I pray, Father God, that the fruit of the Spirit would be in operation. The Lord's saying, I want to actually rest in your mind. I want to rest actually upon your thought life. I want to rest on your words. I want every space in your life to be a place of habitation to where it's no longer about Bible doctrine and concepts. We love and we need doctrine. Please hear me. I spent a lot of money and a lot of time <laughs> investing in a master of divinity. I love theology, but the Lord says to you right now, I want you, daughter of God, 
son of God, to pursue theology on fire. On. What does that mean? When you read your Ooh. Bible, say, God, I want everything in your word to be demonstration in my life. I don't just want concepts and I don't just want information. Holy Spirit, I pray right now. I want to give you my favorite Bible verse. It's not John 3:16, although I love John 3:16. It's not Jeremiah 29:11. I love that one. My favorite Bible verse is Isaiah 64:1, where the cry of the prophet is, "Oh God, that you would rend the heavens and come down." In other words, that you tear open the heavens. So that's my prayer over you right now. I pray over your household. I pray over your life. I pray over those Gen Z kids in your life. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that literally it'd be like the Lord tears open the heavens over the space you're in right now and you experience His manifested tangible presence, mm -hmm. not just for a thrill, not just for a zing, but a marking encounter with God that sends you into whatever sphere of influence you're called into with greater power, greater authority, and furthermore, an atmosphere of heaven that goes wherever yeah. you go. So Lord, overshadow mm. them with your wonderful mm. presence right now in Jesus' name. Mm. We want you to receive yeah. Jesus, but we also yes. want you to receive the Holy Spirit in a way that's going to empower you, empowered from on high, yes. like we've said. Yes, yes, so yes. So receive that, my dear friend. And you can always write me at laura at the three dot TV. Larry, is there anything else that you're feeling before we get any, any other words of knowledge or anything that you're feeling? Only other scripture the Lord's highlighting right now is Zechariah 10 verse 1 where it says, ask for rain in the time of rain. Wow. And I just want to let you know, I know sometimes it can be very discouraging when you're going through your news feed <laughs> and you see all the crazy stuff going on in the world. We would be ignorant if we pretended everything was just going fine. Right, right, right. At the same time, I do want to encourage you Asbury, all these campus awakenings and so many other churches, not just in the United States, but across the earth, I'm hearing rumblings of revival mm. and the scriptures tell us what to do when we hear and see the activity of the Spirit. It says, ask right. for rain, ask for revival, ask for refreshing in the time mm. of rain. So I prophesy that over you right now. I prophesy yeah. that over the nations. We are in the time of rain and our instruction, our invitation is we say more, Lord. We That's ask right. for rain. <laughs> And yes. furthermore, we will be carriers of the outpouring mm -hmm. of the Spirit. Doesn't necessarily, it's not like He's coming down from heaven. Right. One man will split the sky <laughs> that's and right. come out of heaven, and that's Jesus. That's Until right. then, you and I have the privilege of carrying yeah. the rain or the Spirit of God wherever we go. Jesus didn't come to clean up your life. He came to give you a new one. Yep. He wants to yep. make all things new. Yes. So let Him do that today. And we're so glad that you've joined us. Get oh, Larry's book, thanks. Thanks, Pentecostal Laura. Fire. Where can they get it? They can get on Amazon. It's the best place to okay. go. Yeah. Go pick it up. And you know what? I urge you to get more than one. Pentecostal fire, again, not for denominations, but yeah. for the sake of us all welcoming the Holy Spirit into our everyday life. He changes everything. He, he does. makes all things new. Larry, Amen. it has been such a joy to get to oh, sit and talk with you. I love you. this. Yes. All right. Come back and see us. Till next time, my Absolutely. brother. Absolutely. And you too. Send me your testimonies at Laura at the3.tv. So glad that you joined us. Another great episode of The Three. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.